bring me my chapstick? No, Napoleon. But my lips hurt real bad. Video games are brilliant escapism. Switch on your PlayStation 5 and within a minute, or 50 including the updates, you can be a Premier League footballer banging in a hat-trick in the World Cup final. You can be an ultra-tough space soldier blowing lumps off various xenomorphic aggressors. Or you could be a supremely confident rough tough trying to survive and make it big on the tough streets of modern America. Whereas I have today decided to play a handheld game about a funny looking socially awkward outcast with bad hair in a small town. Escapism. Escapism. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite was a 2004 American comedy film charting the eponymous character as he deals with several issues. Napoleon is a very uncool student who is trying to deal with his affection for a popular classmate, his unusual family unit which includes a llama called Tina, a creepy middle-aged uncle, and his brother who's a bit of a work shy and do nothing with an internet girlfriend. As we meet Napoleon, well, he's just made friends with a Mexican exchange student called Pedro. He's a calm but confident character, and the pair soon plan to install him as class president. You may well remember the Vote for Pedro merchandise t-shirts that became briefly popular in the mid-aughts. Napoleon Dynamite was the creation of husband and wife team Gerard and Jerusha Hess and was an absolute darling of the indie movie scene when Fox Searchlight Pictures picked it up for distribution following the January 2004 Sundance Festival. Did that mean it did well? You betcha it did, despite its fairly decent but not gobsmacking high audience and critic average score on Rotten Tomatoes, it has become an instant cult classic in both the cinema and when it was released on DVD. It made an astonishing amount of money in the cinema, $46.1 million from an original budget of $400,000 and made, albeit briefly, a star out of Napoleon actor John Hedder. The dance routine performed to Jamiroquai hit Canned Heat has become one of cinema's most enduring scenes. Not bad for an indie film at all. It did well enough to get a brief animated adaption in 2012 and probably helped see other small town indie hits like Juno and Little Miss Sunshine get a green light. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner! Three years after the movie debuted, Crave Entertainment, together with developers Seven Studios, birthed out a game based on the movie on the Sony PlayStation Portable and the Nintendo DS. And yes, it looks very much like the Nacho Libre game I covered a little while back. Now, despite it being based on a movie by the same writers and director, starring some of the same actors, and the two games being very similar in both their art, their animation style, and indeed the structure of the games, the games aren't related at all. Neither the publisher or developer are the same, and although the movie of Napoleon Dynamite came out first, the game came out a year after Majesco's DS wrestling effort. Napoleon Dynamite is a collection of mini-games, 30 on the PSP version and 25 of the beggars on the DS, loosely based on events from the movie. There are a couple of extra events added to Napoleon's cinematic adventure to give it a bit more length and heft, and certainly more scope for nerdy mini-games. In one of the subplots, Tina the Llama pegs it as soon as the gate opens, and thus, an extra subplot is added for you. The games are mostly locked away with batches of five or six games set in different locations, such as the Napoleon Dynamite Homestead, the school, and the main street near the Rex Quan Dojo gym. If you get at least a bronze medal by doing well, you can progress to the next location. It's visually very scrapbooky, which evokes a lot of the marketing for the movie, along with, of course, Napoleon's very distinctive sketch art. Here's him drawing a liger. What are you drawing? A liger. What's a liger? It's my favourite animal. It's like a lion and a tiger. It is a colourful and quirky way of presenting the action for a movie that, strictly speaking, probably isn't prime fodder for a video game. It works. 
It also enables a look that remains fairly consistent across an extremely diverse selection of games. Proportionately, it's illogical, but again, in a world viewed through the thick lenses of the very strange male Taylor Swift lookalike, again, it works pretty well indeed. The mini games are, well, how do we put this? A bit light in complexity. It's a fairly expansive bunch, ranging from a very limited side scrolling beat em up, a track and field style challenge, a low rent cooking mama section, a few sports games based on things like dodgeball and swing ball, a slew of rhythm games for Napoleon's dance sequences, and some puzzle based exploits. How do they play? Well, imagine if someone had looked at all the games ranked between 20 and 50 on Newgrounds in, say, 2005 and went, yeah, them, let's take them. So none of the actual really good stuff like Alien Hominid or Dad and Me. No, the lesser stuff, not the terrible stuff. No, 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 just the lesser stuff. It is a collection of slightly above average early noughts, flash games wrapped in Napoleon Dynamite paper. This in itself is all right, I guess, but each of the games, well, they slightly outstay their welcome. WarioWare and Bishy Bashy Special show how these packages should work in and out and leave them wanting more in less than a minute, or in some cases less than five seconds. This would mean, of course, that Napoleon Dynamite would require even more mini games in an already inflated set of events from the movie, otherwise it would be severely anemic. As it stands, the mini games that we have go on for far too long. Some of the mini games can go on for five minutes or more, and they're too light for that, really. Another issue is that the game isn't particularly funny. The strength of the movie, aside from its quirky atmosphere, which this game does have, was its dialogue, and the timing of that dialogue. By snipping little lines from Napoleon, his brother Kip and Pedro, and then just sort of repeating those lines ad nauseum for the characters' successes and failures within a level, completely out of context, well... It's not at all funny, really. Some of the situations, enemies and animations are funny-ish, but they aren't why the movie was funny. Another issue is that some of the levels are either poorly thought out or a bit finicky control-wise, which shows particularly badly without the touchscreen on the PSP version. Yes, the PSP version does have more levels, but the DS touchscreen... I think it gives it an advantage and the games play better for the most part. I think, to be honest, a game more akin to Broken Sword or a LucasArts adventure probably would have been the wise way to go with this difficult license. Unlike the very similar Nacho Libre, it doesn't have that central concept of wrestling. Okay, so the wrestling game in Nacho Libre wasn't on par with, say, I don't know, Fire Pro Wrestling or one of the SmackDown games, but it was strong enough to carry it for the most part. The mini games in this, they're all just separate. They don't really gel as an experience. In the end, Napoleon Dynamite feels a little bit lost and slightly directionless, a bit like Napoleon himself. Maybe it's smarter than I thought. Nah. You'd be better off drawing pictures of Ligers in your school book. Wish you wouldn't look at me like that, Napoleon. I wish you'd get out of my life and shut up. IGN, though, found the DS version was pretty fun, saying diehard fans of the movie will find this game enjoyable, but gamers looking for some bite-sized gaming fun might be surprised by what they find here. They gave it a 7 out of 10 in November. 2007. A one-star review was forthcoming from Games Radar in February 2008, however. They said that if they translated the aura of the film through more creative means in the actual gameplay and story, like they did with the art, Napoleon Dynamite might have been more of a success. As it is, however, they recommended staying far, far away. Oh dear. So what's next? Well, 
don't tell Napoleon or he'll get a bit of string on them and he'll drag it behind the school bus. I'm talking about Zoids. Yes, that's the next weird license. But I'm in Zoids on the 8-bit computers. What fun. So like, subscribe and K thanks bye.